Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Michael Study. This is Dr. M. I'm a trained organ maxillofacial surgeon and I'm here to help you out solve the difficult concepts of your dentistry so that we can help you out solve the difficult problems for your dental boards. Also, it can help you out to clear the concepts and apply them in your clinical practice. As you all know, we have started with the subject of pediatric dentistry and today we'll be discussing about the management of child behavior. But before we start with the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you get a notification whenever I upload a video. So let's get started. As you all know, there's a classification of the behavior of a child or a pediatric patient in a clinic. So how do we classify it? According to the classification, it is described as cooperative, then lacking cooperative ability, then potentially cooperative, but this is further also again classified. And then depending upon the behavior scheme, it is further rated. Now first, let's discuss about the cooperative behavior. Children with the minimal apprehension and are with communicative comprehending as well as willing these are the ones with the cooperative behavior these children generally respond well to the behavior shape lacking cooperative abilities that is children who are def deficient in comprehension or communication skills or even both examples are very young children especially less than three year olds and children with a certain disabilities then potentially cooperative children that is children who are capable of appropriate behaviors but are disrupted in the dental environment. The types of potentially uncooperative patients can be classified as uncontrolled one, which are typically of three to six years of age, and these are the characterized tantrums. Then defined, which can be of all ages, characterized by an I don't want to attitude. And third is these are characterized by a passive resistance in the adolescence. Then the timid. These are typically preschoolers in the young grade school age children, characterized by shielding behavior and hesitating behavior. For example, children with a shielding behavior may stand behind a parent in the reception area or may keep their hands close to their face and mouth. Timid children may deteriorate into uncontrolled behavior, especially in the absence of proficient management techniques. Then it is the tense cooperative ones. These are typically older children at least seven years old. These children want to cooperate with the dentist and try to behave in adult manner, but are very nervous. These patients have been also termed as the white knuckle patients because they grip their arms at the dental chest so tightly. Then are the whining ones. Now this whining behavior is usually a continuous process. These are typically there is an absence of tears, just the whining. And this behavior is difficult to overcome in one dental visit. Then coming on to the behavioral rating scheme, which was given by Frank. The common behavioral scale, which is used in the pediatric dentistry. A rating one is the definitely negative, that is for the refusal of the treatment. There is forceful crying, fearlessness, fearfulness, sorry, and any other overt evidence of extreme negativism. Then is rating two, that is negative reluctance to accept treatment, uncooperativeness, some evidence of negative attitude, but not very really pronounced. Rating three is the positive acceptance of the treatment, cautious behavior at times, willingness to comply with the dentist, at times with the reservation, but patients follow the dentist's directions cooperatively. Rating four is definitely positive, which has a good rapport with the dentist, interest in the dental procedures and laughter. Another way variables influencing the children's behavior in the dental environment. First of all is the age. Now, any child which is less than two years, those children are typically lacking in the cooperative ability. In these patients, generally the patients who are two years old. But there's an evidence which is quite varied in the ability to accommodate in two-year-olds. The dentist should use communication techniques such as the tell, show, and do technique, also known as the TST, because the child may have adequate communication skills and may be cooperative with a normal, explanatory, friendly approach. It can be helpful to have parents 
stresses because the two-year-olds may be unable to overcome anxiety resulting from separation from the parent. Then children of three to seven years old. Children in this range are often cooperative and willing to comply. Proper familiarization with the techniques and behavior shaping strategies are valuable tools to influence students' behavior. Then eight-year-olds and older. Children get older, they normally try to control their apprehensions and anxieties to the best of their abilities. If the procedure proves to be stressful to these children, they, re they may revert to undesirable behaviors. And proper familiarization techniques and behavior strategies are valuable tools to influence the child's behavior positively at this stage. Then is the maternal anxiety. Now, there is a high correlation between maternal anxiety and a child's negative behavior. This effect is greatest in children who are less than four years of age. Then is the past medical history, because a child with a positive medical history are more likely to have positive gentle experiences. Children who have been during the previous medical visits also exhibit a negative behavior. Previous surgery is correlated with a negative behavior. Then is the patient awareness of the problem. <clears throat> if a child thinks he or she has a dental problem, the child is more likely to exhibit a negative behavior. Then coming on to the functional inquiry. Now the two goals of the functional inquiry are learn patient and parent concerns, estimate the cooperative ability. The two methods for the functional inquiry is a written questionnaire or even a direct interview. In functional inquiry sample questions, what can these be? First can be the reaction to the past medical experiences, then parental anxiety level. Is the patient worried about his or her condition? How do you think the patient will react to the examination? Then is the functional in inquiry review of medical history. That is attention deficient or the hyperactivity syndrome is the ADHD, which is quite common. Learning disability, mental health disorder, drug or alcohol abuse? Is this the child's first visit? Is the child extremely nervous? Any difficulties on the visits to the physician, the child's hobbies or sports, parent or legal guardian's comments, and review patient's medications. So these medications give the clues about the potential behavior. It also reduces the adverse reactions and may alter the behavior. Then the behavioral management techniques and strategies. The goal of the treatment strategies which is to perform quality gentle care for the patient and promote a positive patient attitude and confidence in self in the dental environment. Strategies before the appointment, that is a brochure or a discussion with the parent. DVD or the video presentations, brochures, DVDs and information on the office website. Modeling with the sibling or parents. Then is the behavior shaping. Now, by definition, a procedure that slowly develops a behavior by reinforcing successive approx excessive approximations to a desired goal. For example, if the goal is to have a child open their mouth wide, the dentist positively reinforces each effort on the part of the patient to wide open its mouth. If the child is asked to open their mouth for examination of the teeth and the child complies, but to a very limited degree, the dentist should give the child positive reinforcement. The response from the dentist is likely to cause the patient to open wider, which is followed by the positive reinforcement. Now, reinforcement of the desired behavior may be verbal or non-verbal. A non-verbal reinforcement may consist of a pat on the shoulder, a smile, or even a wink. Reinforcement should be immediate and specific. Non-specific reinforcement, such as you're a good boy, does not help to shape the desired behavior and becomes boring and meaningless at times. Then is the very important the tell show do technique. Now, in this, the behavioral management technique in which the dentist explains the procedure or a part of the procedure to the child using appropriate technology, that is, or the terminology, that is, the tell, and familiarizes the patient with the instruments and the procedures. A gentle drum demonstration, which is very in, that is known as the show, and then performs the procedures that is the do. So it is the tell, show, and do technique. The 
indications are for cooperative children. These children should be introduced to the dental procedures using the TSD. Children who are lacking cooperative abilities, some patients initially may seem to be cooperative ability, may understand more when you review the procedure. Timid, tense, cooperative, and binding children. Familiarization generally with the various procedures can help children with the initial anxiety control. Then the uncontrolled or the defined children, when patients in these categories begin to listen and communicate, it is crucial for the practitioner to familiarize them. Then is the aversive conditioning. In aversive conditioning, it's a psychological or strategy that uses some form of negative stimulus, but with the purpose of extinguishing or improving the negative behavior. Its purpose is to establish the better communication, gain control, protect the children from injury, and make the dental experience quite a pleasant one. Now, its indications are in normal children who are momentarily uncontrolled or defined, usually three years or older. The contraindications where patients who lack cooperative ability, younger than three, timid children, and tense cooperative ones. Now, there's a thing that historically aversive conditioning had been applied. A disapproving look may be uh, constructed to this aversive conditioning. A method termed as voice control in which a dentist speaks with children in form tones is considered a higher level of aversive conditioning. The handover mouth, mouth, also known as the home technique in which a child in which the dentist gently places the fingers or the hands on the patient's mouth to gain attention of uncontrolled children. Now, most pediatric dentists in the graduate program do not teach home as an acceptable behavior. But the aversive conditioning should always be followed by a positive reinforcement or repraise or improved behavior. And all the pediatric dentist program teach the appropriate pharmacological techniques, for example, nitrous oxide, conscious sedation, and even GBA. Communication with the parents before and after the affairs of conditioning is very necessary. By using aversive conditioning can expose the dentist to liability. If the practitioner chooses to use aversive conditioning, informed parental consent should be taken. Now the miscellaneous points which should be considered. First is the appointment length. Studies are conflicting regarding the effect of the appointment length on child's behavior. Then appointment time. Some dentists generally believe that morning appointments are better for the preschool children because the patient is rested. However, other dentists who children may be less active in afternoon and more manageable. Although there is no significant difference in both the appointments. Then there are two common methods for checking the cavities and trauma in the toddlers. The parents sit in the dental chair and cradles the child in their arms and helps to refrain the patient's arm. The dentist examines the patient with the hands on both the sides of the patient's head so the head movement can be sensed and restricted. The dental assistant is positioned on the opposite side of the chair from the dentist and can restrain the legs. In second, the parent and the dentist sit knee to knee and the patient's head rests on the dentist's thigh and the parent generally restrains the child's legs and the dentist can aid in restraining the arms. Then is the ADHD. In this, the basic information involves two sets of symptoms. That is the in, in at, attention and a combination of hyperactive and impulsive behaviors. The ADHD usually manifests between the age of three to five. Worldwide, 2 to 9.5 of all the school age children have ADHD, and this can persist in adulthood. Now, the common medications which can have adverse reactions, the, the information should be known. Then, the treatment modification depending upon the age and uh, depending upon the severity, shorter appointments, and step by step verbal reinforcement. Now, no, the attire worn by the dental team, the verification is in inclusive regarding the effect of the color and the styling. Other factors such as the parenting style and ability of the dental team to communicate well with children are much more important in determining the child's reaction to the dental environment. So these points are very important and have to be taken, taken care of during the behavioral shaping. This brings us to the end of the video.
I would like to tell you all that if you want my detailed notes along with the slides of the particular lecture, then kindly click in the description box. You can fill up the Google form. After filling up the Google form, we'll send you the payment link. A low cost involved study notes can help you out to clear your dental board examinations. And it costs just $15 per lecture, both the slides as well as my detailed notes. So this brings up to the end of the video. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel and also click on the bell icon so that you get a notification whenever I upload a video. Thank you.